Hello, and welcome to Book 5, Chapter 2 of You Should Be Reading. This week, this week I'd like to talk to you about Count Zero by William Gibson, the second in the Sprawl trilogy uh, by him, the first one which was Neuromancer. Uh, this one is quite interesting and definitely a head trip. Uh, if any of you like the cyberpunk genre, uh, William Gibson is basically the man who created it. Uh, and he did so starting with Neuromancer and moving on from there. And this is fantastic. It's a wonderful little book and it's very, very strange. It tells the tale of basically uh, three sort of characters. Three, three to four main characters. Although two of those main characters are together for the most part. First we have uh, a kind of a, a corporate... Uh, a freelancer who comes in and helps, specializes in helping move uh, corporate uh, zaibatsu, I guess you could call them, uh, corporate people from who want to escape their corporation and go to another one. Uh, it's his job to, to make that extraction and, and transfer. Uh, a man by the name of Turner, uh, he is one of our, our main characters. Second main character is a young uh, kid who longs to be a hotshot console jockey, a hacker by the name of Bobby Newark, uh, who gets himself in a little over his head by uh, going and using some, uh, using a program that he got from one of his buddies, uh, somebody that he thought was his buddy, and using it to, on a system which is, which it was pointed out to him as being, you know, this is fine, this will be perfect for you to wet your teeth on. It almost kills him. The ice that he runs into is like real black ice, has some severe psychic uh, mental feedback, it's basically on his way to killing him when someone, some, some woman's voice uh, calls to him and interferes and simply causes him to not die, which is very good for him. Uh, he ends up getting wrapped up with some, uh, some bad dudes kicking around <clears throat> ones that are uh, very much they look on entities in the cyberspace as being Loa from uh, a voodoo tradition any of you who know any voodoo and whatnot they talk about Legba and Baron Sambi and all the other Loa but that they are they're real things kicking around in cyberspace and are able to to ride them which is one of the other things they call them they, they call themselves horses to these things because the Loa then ride the people. If you know the culture, you, you kind of know what I'm talking about there. Uh, and then you have this uh, young lady by the name of um, Krishkova, I think it is. Where is it? Mary Krishkova. Marley. Marley Krishkova, I believe. Uh, she... Uh, ends up getting a job offer from an extremely wealthy individual, an individual who is practically a corporation unto himself. That's how wealthy he is. Uh, and he wants her to track down the maker of one of these boxes that is basically attributed to a man named Cornwell, I think it is, if I remember correctly. And she has to track him down. So her job tracking this guy down this young kid uh, who gets himself in over his head uh, and ends up hooking up with some uh, some voodoo types uh, kicking around and Turner who is specializing the who is uh, supervising the extraction of a corporate employee by the name of Mitchell but ends up actually extracting his daughter instead all three of those uh, storylines are all interwoven together in this wonderful little book. Now, the first thing I will say is it's a head trip and a half because there's a lot of stuff going around in the cyberspace area. There's a lot of uh, little spiritual nods here and there splattered throughout the book. And uh, hello, buddy. I got a kitty walking around. Uh, as well as the fact of just very strange things happening kicking around in this book. But 
the one thing that is interesting is how it all plays out. And I've taken a little bit of a look, and I think the Mona Lisa Overdrive, which is the next book in the trilogy, uh, is directly connected to this. Because the young girl we have, uh, Angie, Angela Mitchell, uh, the daughter, uh, has some things done to her. Her brain was altered because she wasn't smart enough, according to her father. And all of these things mesh together and sort of interweave and pull each other together. Uh, the story threads and whatnot. It's really quite interesting. I, I enjoy I enjoyed reading it immensely. It's strange and bizarre, and you may not understand a lot of it if you if you can't wrap your head around the way Mr. Gibson writes because he writes he writes like no other author I've ever encountered. And the ending was very very interesting. It didn't really feel like an ending, which is why I think Mona Lisa Overdrive is directly tied to this. Uh, they do make some mention toward the events of Neuromancer, uh, but it seems like the events of Neuromancer are only tangentially connected to this one. But it's one of those books. So if you like cyberspace, if you like the first, uh, if you like Neuromancer and have read that, uh, Count Zero is probably uh, one you're going to have to check out because it's it's right along the same lines. So yeah. That's it for this episode of You Should Be Reading. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, as always, if you like what I'm doing, please give that like button a tap. Uh, give that subscribe button a tap as well if you haven't already, so you can be kept apprised of when I do new videos. And uh, ring that bell because that will notify you, I guess. Um, and throw a comment in the comment section. Have you read Count Zero or any other William Gibson books you think I might be interested in? I do have one of his other books, um, The Difference Engine, which is kind of steampunk, I guess. I haven't read that yet. But it's on my shelf. It's it's on my to-be-read list. Uh, yeah, throw those comments in the comments section. I'd love to get a discussion going with some people. And until next time, my friends, remember, you should be reading Count Zero by William Gibson. And I'll see you next time.